Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and I am just sitting here with a cup of coffee, excited to talk to you guys, a little sad because I don't get to see your faces. You get to look at me on a screen and I get to think about you on the other side, but it's still good because we still are kind of connected this way. <laughs> I am honored to be able to talk to you at all. I talked to you last year and shared a little bit about my family. I am married. I have a husband named Cody. I have two sons, Easton and Hudson, and I have two little girls who are just about to turn three years old, which is amazing, Nettie and Lottie. Now, I've heard that you guys are thinking about studying, whatever you guys are doing about the sanctity of life. So that's something that our family has some opinions on because our little girls, Nettie and Lottie, if you remember, have Down syndrome. Now, I know just saying that might not mean much because it's just words. I'm just a grown up and I'm just yapping at you. You might be used to that, <laughs> but I do want to talk about just the difference between words and really experiencing something. Because you can hear someone say words, you can read words, you can even recite words, and they're still just in your head, right? But when you experience something, when you have a relationship with someone, friendship or just exposure to something, all those words in your head, that surface level understanding travels into your heart. It shifts into a deeper understanding. And it's then that we do our biggest growing when we can actually connect to something or someone then it's not just reciting words, but it's taking the message of those words and applying it into a, our lives and a way that we feel more attached and more connected. So that's what I want to do with you guys today. I don't want to just be up here talking. I will give you some words, but then I want to make that bridge to real people. So here's the word part. Here's the word part. Now you can take it from me or you could probably just go to Google. Everyone goes to Google, right? Now, here's what I would say. If I were to give you a definition of a person with Down syndrome, I would probably walk through what Down syndrome is. I would probably say Down syndrome is a genetic anomaly, I guess, where your DNA has a little bit extra. And I even have, I brought it for you, this little model that I made. Now, DNA, I don't know if you've come across this in your lessons yet, it's like a double helix, and you have 23 chromosome pairs. Now you get one side here from your mother, and one side here from your father, and they swirl together and they make you who you are. How you look, your hair color, your eye color, tall, short, all that stuff, all embedded within your DNA in each and every one of your cells. Now, like I said, there's 23 pairs. If you are a person who has Down syndrome, on the 21st one, let's see, on one, two, three, four, all the way down to 21, it looks like this. Aha. That little extra. Now, in our family, we like to say that there's one from the mom, one from the dad, and one from God. It's just a splash of extra. And that makes the little differences in someone who has Down syndrome from someone who doesn't. Another thing that our family likes to do is read the book, The Abilities in Me. Down syndrome. It's by Gemma Keir. If this is something that you're able to go 
buy through Amazon or wherever you want to find it, uh, that's also a good tool to help you describe Down syndrome. Now, if you were to go to Google, you would find a different description. I'm gonna do it right now. What is Down syndrome? Wide range of developmental delays and physical disabilities caused by a genetic disorder. Genetic chromosome 21 disorder causing developmental and intellectual delays. Down syndrome is a genetic disorder caused when abnormal cell division results in extra genetic material from chromosome 21. So that's what you would have. And that is actually what a lot of parents have. In fact, when I was pregnant with Nettie and Lottie, I was given the Google answer plus a lot of statistics and probability on all the things that could go wrong. All the possible ways that Nettie and Lottie could have health problems and issues. So it's not exactly surprising if that's what people are given that we learn that a lot of parents actually, when they find out that their child has Down syndrome, choose to terminate their pregnancy. Now, I think that's super sad and I think it's just crazy to think that I could have done that now because I look at Nettie and Lottie and I see so much life and joy. And that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take a look at real life with Down syndrome with some of our beautiful friends that we've met since having Nettie and Lottie in the Down syndrome community. Take a look. Can you say mama? Yeah. You wanna fly? Show me flying. There you go, good boy. Show me flying. Are you gonna fly? You can do it. Come on, keep going. You can fly. <laughs> Are you getting tired? Are you okay? <laughs> Don't you see it? Keep flying. Keep flying. Oh, good job. You rolled over. Good boy. Yeah. Right. Say hi. Hi. Waving. Waving. Good girl. Hi. Hi. Are you gonna go? Good job! Good job! Good job! Good job! Good and I'm 24 years old and I was born with Down syndrome but Down syndrome does not define me but I'm a model, I'm a speaker, I'm an athlete yeah. <laughs> yeah, Knuckles? You give her Knuckles? Give sister Knuckles <laughs> Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Knuckles! <laughs> High five! High five! High five! <laughs> yes! Oh, good hug! Lottie, hold your sister! Oh! <laughs> oh! Their parents are not sad, and their parents are not mourning. Her parents are overjoyed with these children, and so is God. God did not make a mistake. He 
made these children who they are purposefully and they have a purpose. They are beautiful and he is an artist and it shows. Now, you've had the words, you've seen real life and hopefully you're able to bridge the gap and see the difference there. I just learned this being an adult, but you are way younger and think of the potential you have to share with the world such a simple realization. Did you know in Denmark in 2019, they only had 18 children born with Down syndrome. The rest were all terminated. Wow, only 18. That's over 95% of their population choosing to abort. So we have work to do if we're going to be spreading the truth about who's in control of life, right? It says in the Bible, in his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. God's hand. The life of every creature is in God's hand and he knows what he has made. Every hair on its head, every breath from its lungs. He did it beautifully, purposefully, uniquely. Okay, there is an organization. If we're gonna be talking about sanctity of life, if we're gonna be considering all of these things that I want to point you towards, and that is Hearts of Joy International. So Hearts of Joy International is raising money and offer children with Down syndrome, the life-saving procedure of having open heart surgery. And they're also educating the parents um, and the, the families all together in hopes to change the whole culture, in hopes to shift the people who think that maybe it, Down syndrome is a curse from God or a mistake or some sort of um, punishment into the truth of knowing what it is and um, that it doesn't define a person, but that it's a beautiful part of who that person is. You prayed for us when Lottie had her open heart surgery, and because she had that, her life will be much longer. In fact, now, because of what's available through our cardiology, people with Down syndrome are living twice as long. They used to only be predicted to live until their 20s, and now their life expectancy is up into the high 60s and many people are living past that. It's amazing. So I think that they're great if you're looking for a place to donate or support or share with your family, that's who I like. And then there was another thing. <gasps> we have an update. Last year we prayed for a little girl named Indy. We're praying for you, Indy. Indy was in the hospital and she was battling leukemia, I believe. When we prayed for her, if she was still in the hospital doing really poorly, and we held up papers that spelled her name, and we prayed for God to heal her, and God healed her. Little Indy came out of the hospital. She went home. Her family shared with the world that something amazing happened, that prayers were answered, that they were thankful for everybody's prayers, that they look at her and are just astounded. They might be coming up against another challenge. So I'm gonna close this with a little prayer. And in that prayer, we're going to praise God because he is a healer and he has healed. And we're gonna lift her and her family up once more. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the chance for us to uh, virtually be together today. Thank you for taking our hearts past our own understanding. Thank you for giving eyes to see as you see. We praise you that you did a miraculous thing. And now we pray for them again. Lord, you know what, what their future holds and you are never leaving their side any second of it. We just pray that you can continue to give them um, perhaps just peace, peace beyond understanding, that you can guide doctors 
that are equipped to help that you can um, just rally the community around them so that they can feel supported and loved. Lord, let that little girl feel all the love of you and everyone around her. And we just pray that she can continue to spread your goodness through her life like she has and like she will do. We thank you for today. And Lord, let us also share our lights with the world. Let us spread your goodness and point everybody we come across to you. Let us be a change and a difference while we're here until we all get to be with you and joy is the only option. Amen. There you have it. Those are my updates. Bye guys. I hope you have a great month, week, day, all of it. Have a great one.